So, I was originally going to make a video just talking about transmog and my thoughts on it, but I want to talk about a bigger picture when it comes to all this. I want to talk about monetization in general, which includes obviously transmog, because monetization versus content being supplied in Destiny is something that I'm really, really disappointed on and concerned about when it comes to not just Destiny's future, but Bungie's future. And that's why I'm making this video. I want to make some constructive criticisms here, so take this with a grain of salt. But I want to make disclaimer here, okay? A lot of these criticisms may go poof, gone, because, well, Bungie openly told us that they are trying to increase the size of their studio, for starters, uh, and also get enough people behind Bungie to work on content. Because guess what? They're self-publishing now, and that's got to be something very crazy that they're trying to get used to, because... Like, for example, Forsaken, amazing expansion. The only reason why that was possible on the level of content was they had to have the help of Vicarious Vision, uh, which is a parent company with uh, uh, Activision. They worked together to make Forsaken. Bungie didn't do it by themselves. They needed help, obviously. Like, it's... Like, I'm not trying to say that I don't see these things. Like, that was a, that's an obvious thing, that now that they're self-publishing, things are going to be different for now until they can get uh, enough people to work on content to where they don't need anybody anymore. They just are Bungie, and that's it. So, down the road, like, maybe after Lightfall, I could see things uh, getting way, way better. I, I'm hopeful about that, but I'm not going to talk about the what-ifs, and I'm not going to just keep shut and let my criticisms go away because of the the maybes. I want to talk about this now because this has been something that's been bothering me since like the beginning of Destiny even. But I want to talk about Destiny 2 and these problems that I've been having when it comes to monetization versus the amount of content supplied. And for starters, I want to just talk about the main monetization that we have in front of us that's the norm, which is purchasing expansions. I want to start with that. Now, I understand that, obviously, they have to charge us for new content because it costs a lot of money to make that. Uh, but here's the thing, and I made a video talking about this as well. Beyond Light, and I still stand to this, Beyond Light was not worth $45. Uh, I am not giving any sort of hatred or saying that developers were lazy because, obviously, with what was going on in the world, it's got to be tough to make content um, not being in the studio together and such, so I'm not talking about that, I like what they gave us, but for $45, no, I feel like it was a little bit too overpriced, heck, even Bungie themselves stated, hey, lower your expectations on this expansion compared to, like, Forsaken, and guess what, yet, it was the same price as Forsaken, beyond light, what we were charged, uh, for was, a raid, which was good, uh, a story, which was good as well, stasis, which kind of felt like we were just kind of shooting ourselves in the foot, if anything, for that purchase, uh, some legendary weapons, uh, and some exotics, not like a lot, lot, maybe like around like 13 new amount of content, and, uh, a strike, which, um, not gonna lie, was kind of poopy, because the boss was just the Eater of Worlds boss, shrunken down, and it just felt even worse that they did the DCV, which was removing content, and here they are leaving a boss that was removed from the game as a strike boss. I just felt like that was not a good move when it comes to making a new strike. I don't know. That's just my, my opinion. Um, so I didn't really care for that strike either, uh, but we did not get any PvP maps, no Gambit maps, you know, nothing, uh, no new dungeons or anything along those lines, like nothing crazy. I know that a lot of you are like, well, what about Europa? That was a free-to-play thing. That was free to all players, so. Um, but let's talk about Forsaken. Forsaken, we got nine supers. We got a brand new mode from the ground up called Gambit with new maps tied to it. We got a new PvE activity that's been made for us, which is a mini raid, the dungeons, a very first dungeon ever uh, inside of Destiny. And uh, we also got PvP maps, we also got some strikes, we had a long story, we had two patrol zones, we got a massive raid, and of course we had a vendor refresh for all vendors. New weapons and armor for Iron Banner, PvP, Vanguard, um, you know, Gambit, uh, you name it. Just tons and tons of loot. And yeah, when you compare it to Beyond Light, it ain't 
it ain't equal, and yet they're the same price. That's the first thing that started to concern me. It almost felt like Bungie was like, eh, they'll buy it anyways kind of deal. Just, just doesn't feel right. They said openly, lower your expectations on the, on the amount of content going into Beyond Light, like compared to Forsaken. And it's like, okay, you just told us to lower our expectations, but you're not going to lower the price. Like, let's be equal here. It just, that's concerning. The, this coming from Bungie themselves, no one else, not Activision or anything, just Bungie. Like, hey, yeah, we're still going to price this at $45. Like, ugh, I don't know. That just doesn't feel right. That just, it didn't, but we, it just doesn't stop there. Now let's move on to monetization going forward with like Eververse. So Eververse gets updated nine to 10 times a year. Uh, the reason why I say nine is because we didn't get Crimson Doubles this year. Um, and even then Crimson Doubles doesn't really get a giant Eververse uh, update on like loot. But regardless though, Eververse gets like $15 armor sets uh, every like season and certain events and uh, per class and many emotes many cosmetics and such and they're optional of course which is why i've never really had a problem with eververse but this is where my main problem comes in where bungie says something and now i'm like kind of scratching my head like uh well eververse was there uh and they stated this was eververse is there to fund for the free events because they're making these free events that are free and they're trying to make a profit from from them without being like, hey, you have to purchase this this uh, event through like the season pass or something like that. So they have the Eververse store, an optional cosmetic only um, thing. So fair enough. Maybe that worked the first year, Bungie, when you introduced these events, but it, if if even, um, but not anymore. Solstice of Heroes is going to have the EAZ for the third time in a row. Same bosses, same whatever. The only thing that's different is we're going to have like an armor set that's for free. Do I think that they are making um, like a double profit uh, of compared to what they're paying for when it comes to Eververse? No, in my opinion, I feel like they're making more of a profit more than what they're spending on these free events. Like way, way too much to where it's kind of disappointing. I feel like they could put the money... Uh, and again, this this could be changed because it could be because they don't have enough people to make enough content for this stuff. But think about it, okay? Uh, they said that they didn't want to do SRL because it was too expensive. That feels kind of ridiculous because Destiny 1 Eververse is very different from Destiny 2's. And monetization is very different from Destiny 1 to Destiny 2. I feel like Destiny 2 is a lot more profitable when it comes to monetization and Eververse and such. Um, and I feel like they could definitely do SRL. Like, I, I know that sounds very, like, ignorant of me to just say that, but I believe they could, especially because it would work very well. SRL was the perfect idea of where Bungie's statement of Eververse is there to fund the free event every single year. Why? Because SRL would be made from the ground up, probably cost a lot of money to make the first you know, time to make sure that it runs with all the, the gates and the physics and such. But then after that, it's just every year they maybe add one or two tracks. There's innovation. There's actual, like, new stuff to get you excited to play Dawning. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to play Dawning this year because we're going to have new stuff. There's there's a new track or whatever that I get to play on. Uh, the Eververse doesn't feel like it's just thrown in my face entirely. It feels like it's it's side with what I'm enjoying with this event. I'm excited for this event to come forward instead of being like, oh, well, I guess we're doing the EAZ again for the third time in a, in a row. You know, Festival of Lost, the, the Haunted Forest gets like small tweaks and that's it. Like, if anything, it, it doesn't evolve. It does. They don't add something new every single year. I mean, Guardian Games, all they did was just make a metal system, a bounty system tied to it. And then this they brought it back and all they did was give us a strike playlist with modifiers. whoop de doo Like, the, they could have done something where they take a Menagerie-esque kind of style where it's like an Olympic Games thing uh, mixed with Menagerie where we have to do, like, certain things. We're thrown into round one where we do an obstacle course or, oh, you got to kill a certain amount of ads and you get medals if you do a good job um, as a team or something like that. And it's in the aesthetic of the Guardian games with the white, yellow, red, blue, whatever. Um... So, and every year they could, like, add another challenge, like, another area to the, the, um, wherever the, the thing would be in. Think of, like, the Menagerie just adding another room. 
Um, they could have done something like that, innovating, where every year they have something to add to it, to make it different or whatever. Same thing with Solstice of Heroes. They actually have, they could be like, okay, instead of um, the EDZ, now it's Europa. It's a floating island of, of Europa. It's all icy and they have um, bosses and enemies that are tied to Europa now. And then the next year, it's a different patrol zone. You, you get what I'm saying? Like innovations to the Eververse store, but they don't do anything. It almost feels like they're like, ah, we'll make a profit. So who cares? Again, it's probably because they don't have enough people to make content, but I'm not going to go with the what ifs. I'm talking about what has been going on since Destiny 2's launch. This is concerning. I don't like how these free events don't feel exciting. SRL felt exciting. I don't know why Bungie would think about, eh, not, uh, nah, let's not introduce that into the game because money reasons and think about ways of how they could implement it. What would innovate it to to get more profit to it? I mean, Eververse, I feel like, is uh, been doing great. I don't know. I feel like it has because... Um, the reason why, it, uh, the only reason why I would think that Eververse is working so well is because that's why they introduced then Transmog, another tr uh, monetization. Transmog is the most recent thing that has made me uh, want to make this video entirely. Why? Because, well, Transmog is super grindy to begin with to try and get the free armor, the free synthesis to get your armor. Um, but not only that, but there's a limit. There's a limit every season, and um, you could buy your way through getting stuff, and there's no limit to that, like purchasing it, but there is a limit to go get it free. Why? That's the problem, though. Why? I could tell you why. Because monetization. That's it. Make money off of something. I, I get that they were going to make this monetized. Like, I feel like that's okay because they worked so hard on this. But at the same time, to put a limit, I mean, they could make it super grindy, which it is. It was proven that it, it is. Um, and it, like, takes forever, like a lot of time to do it for free. Um, but putting a limit is just very scummy. It's very anti-consumer, and it just, I feel like that's very, th that's betraying your community. And I don't like what they're doing with that. The reason why I'm really annoyed by this is basically what Bungie is doing is putting a, a, a way for you to to repurchase armor you grinded for and have already purchased in the past. Like, for example, I purchased Destiny 2 Vanilla, $60 game. You know, I got the deluxe edition, so it was probably more expensive than that. Um, and obviously for me to get the raid armor, I have to have it in my collection. So I had to grind that raid as well. So I put my money into the game and my time. But now Bungie's like, well... You could choose to have that armor, but you won't be able to get all your armor. It, it just wouldn't be possible, at least for free. You would have to spend money on that. And that's scummy because it, basically what Bungie is doing is like, I'm going to a grocery store. Let's. Just, this is going to sound stupid, but just bear with me here. It's like Bungie is going to me and they're selling bananas. And I go, I want to buy that banana. So I buy the banana. Here, here's, here's your dollar for banana. Okay, whatever. And then I go to peel it in front of Bungie and they freak out. And they're like, whoa, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to eat my banana. No, if you want to eat the banana, that's an extra $2. But I purchased the banana. Why are you charging me again? That's basically what it feels like with Transmog and the way that they're treating it. I purchased that armor and I grinded to acquire it. And yet Bungie's like, no, let's charge you again. They, they're not adding, it's not for new armor, this is armor, even when you get the new seasons, they're, they're armor you purchased, and you earned, and yet there's an extra step of monetization or, or grinding, I'm fine with the grind, whatever, I don't care, make it take a while, I don't care, but a, a limit on what you can get for free? to ensure that monetization would be something that incentivizes people? Really? Bungie, what's going on here? Because that is very, very concerning. Because what's next? I mean, what are you going to start doing? Actually charging us for other things? Oh, wait. They have done something concerning. 
where once again, Bungie says something and does the opposite. Bungie made a statement saying they will not put stuff in the Eververse store, where we cheered them, just like we did with everything else, you know, because it is good stuff when we hear it, but then they do the opposite. But they said, we're not going to put activity-themed items in the Eververse store. That means raid stuff, you know, stuff that would look like it would go in the raid, in strikes, whatever. You know, stuff that clearly would be for a specific activity inside of Destiny. Guess what they did? Vault of Glass released, and they put shaders behind a paywall and an emote behind the paywall. An emote, a, ch a sit-in-the-chair emote that was basically uh, like the chair emote that we got in the uh, Callus raid, which, by the way, was a free emote that you would acquire. That concerns me. Granted, though, I understand Vault of Glass was free. So that's where I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, making a profit off of Vault of Glass themed stuff because they reintroduced it for free. And they did do some cool stuff where they added random rolls to the weapons instead of just being copy paste of the Destiny 1 weapons and such. But still, I, I just, that really concerns me. Because what if they're going to do that for things that are paid as well over time? I'm fine with the exotic ornaments, like, you know, all that stuff, and even the emo, I'm like, whatever, but the shaders is where I was really concerned. Like, are we going to actually put paywalls on now shaders next? I mean, they already increased the bright dust amount, which was crazy. Like, it's just, this bungee, I don't like. I don't. Because they're now independent. They're supposed to show us that, hey, we left Activision. We're going to treat you right. We're not going to just squeeze your wallet just because. That's why I have high expectations now when it comes to not even Savathun, because I understand that they're still trying to increase the size of their studio. But after Light, after Lightfall, like if they have all these people, if they have the studio done and they still can't make a lot of content like they did with Forsaken and stuff, I don't know. That's very, very concerning. It's like, why did they do the DCV right now? They could have waited, maybe. I don't know. I know that there was a lot of technical reasons of why they did it, too. And not only that, but when they did the free-to-play model, don't you find it very convenient? Ever since they went free-to-play, they haven't made a PvP map or a Gambit map. Why? Because they can't charge us for that anymore. One of the things that I've learned with games is when they don't have to uh, ensure profits like you purchasing something they'll kind of take a, a little bit of a rest on certain things like pvp maps used to be crucial in expansions because it would sell the expansion they have to ensure that people that like pvp are buying the expansion as well beyond light came out and there was none because pvp is free to play all the crucible maps are not charged so they don't have to make six to eight crucible maps like they did with like taken king and that's scary i i don't even like the free-to-play model that like people think well oh you know they hurt their profits when they did free-to-play no why is a lot of games doing that because there are people that will spend money in the eververse store but not purchase a season like it, it, they will literally do that purchase a 15 dollar ornament over a $10 season because the free-to-play model works. It does. And it hurts us. It, like, because like I said, the priority of PvP is just kind of out the door because that area is free to play. Same thing with like Gambit. Like, why? They're, they're, they should not at this point. If this is the mindset, that's, it's just concerning. That's why I wanted to make these constructive criticisms about this because what if they don't do anything in the future, even when they get enough people? I don't know. I could see Destiny's downfall. I mean, we're already seeing it now. And just the lack of communication and just hope on that end a little bit. Oh, they've been saying nice things like, hey, be excited about the future. But they've done that all the time. So, uh, I mean, they said during Shadow Keep about renewed PvP focus, and we haven't seen that at all. So saying something is different than doing now when it comes to Destiny, and that's why I wanted to make this video. And I hated to do it, because I hate talking negatively about a game that I do enjoy, 
and something that actually is very concerning, of course, too. But that's why I wanted to make this video. But I want to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Like, do you agree, disagree? I, I really want to know. And uh, if you agree with what I'm saying here, leave a like. Feel free to leave a like on this video. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. <laughs> but uh, regardless, though, thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a chibi-tastic day, night, evening, wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next video. Chibi out.